Oh, we on? Oh, snap. I'm still trying to get it up on, uh, I don't know what I did, but it's not coming up on, uh, YouTube fam. We gonna kick it anyway. We gonna kick it anyway. Let's see. Come on, YouTube. Don't be shy. Oh, let me open up the lines. Come on, YouTube, you gonna let me down? What's up, Naichi? Shouts out to my fam. So I gotta start all over for. All right, I want to welcome everybody. We're checking out live. We doing the introduction on the podcast. Hope you got my. We coming up on Facebook right now. We up on Facebook right now, my fault, and we coming up on YouTube. Choose music. I'm trying to do a lot. We can't handle it. Putting out too much data. I gotta walk this thing by hand like fuck. This ain't you, baby. Is it? This ain't too much. All right, right. here we go, here we go. Alright, Spreaker. Oh, my mic was on all the time. I was talking over the music. I'm so fam. Alright, sound. The lines will be open. We are live. Facebook. We are live on YouTube. It's about to go down. Let me put up a better picture up here because this I don't I, I don't like that that picture, right? It's going to put the the Phoenix up so that people can see because the the picture on YouTube is horrible. But hey, we out here growing, right? So now I'm not gonna hold everybody hostage. I'm not gonna take too long. No, I'm not gonna do that. But what I am going to do is. We are going to look at these folk tales. This one folk tale. What I want to do, I want to keep it fair and above board. I'm not even, I have not even read this folk tale. Now, it might be one that I know. It might be one that I don't know. But I'm about to show y'all something, right? What I'm going to show you is how our ancestors work. And I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you how long I've been doing this, right? I'm going to read this story for the first time live on air. The only thing I read is the title. Now, I know that the title, we might it, it might have been in a different form. But the issue is, one of the things we got to start stressing for our young people, one of the things we got to start doing for ourselves is to start practicing mastery. Not, not my fault, not practicing 
becoming masters, right? So now, when it comes to these folk tales, I'm pretty confident, right? When it comes to these proverbs, I'm pretty confident. I got over 300 shows up under my belt for these proverbs. I got over 300 shows for these folk tales. I've been doing this for long enough that I said, hey, I go on here without even reading it, man. I'm just ready to go on because first things first is I love making sure that we are able to spread the right information, right? Because our people are hungry for the truth. Our people are hungry, right? Now, even though they might not know, they might not know it, right? They haven't ate real food. They haven't got real wisdom in so long, they don't know that they even want it. So, people, look, I'm here to bring it for you. Now, check this out. Today is Kuji Chagalia. For those that don't know, Brother Hatim is on what I call the Nguza Saba Challenge, right? I have conquered the week. Yes, I have. I, I discovered it. Just like the a West Asian has discovered America and put his flag down and staped it and, and conquered it and said that he was the first person here, he discovered it, right? Like he discovered parts of Africa, right? It don't matter that people was there. He discovered it. So I'm doing the same thing with the week. I discovered the goddamn week. That's right. Brother Hatim has laid his sign of the Guza Saba down in a seven-day week and used it and said, there was no days prior to me using Nguza Saba. We just went went around and grunted names. Now, we can probably say Moja, Kuji Chagale, Ujimo, Jama, Nia, Kuumba, and Imani. For those that don't know what those are, those are the principles of Nguza Saba. And I have applied those seven principles. I have applied those seven principles to my week. And I'm challenging other people to do the same because one of the first things, I ain't going to say first things, one of the things that we need to take back is our time. One of the first things we need to take back is our time. We have allowed them to conquer and to incorporate and to colonize our minds. We have allowed them to conquer and, 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 and desecrate our symbols. We have allowed for individuals to come in and just totally desecrate our culture. And I'm saying it's time. It's time for us to take it back. So I'm taking the first step. I'm grabbing the week. Today is Kuji Chagalia. For those that don't know, that's the day of self-determination. All right, let me get my cheat sheet. Also on the, self, the day of self-determination, we have justice, which is the modic principle. We also have the hermetic law of correspondence. Right? Kuji Chagali is my day because I was born on this day. And in West Africa, they had a tradition of naming the children on the days that they was born. And for males born on this Kuji Chagali, on this at this time frame right here, the name is Kwabana. For females, it's Abana. Now, I'm looking for my sheet so I can share those definitions with people because y'all need to understand, man. Our ancestors was on some deep stuff, man. Our ancestors were monitoring the week and looking at certain things that happened during the week and being able to name the children so the children will have an identity for themselves, right? They'd be able to plug in and know little things about themselves. When I read about what it meant to be born on this day, it blew my mind because it lined up with my life or better my life lined up with the ancestral wisdom, which confirmed for me, my people knew what they was doing. Black folks, your people knew what they was doing. And we know what we're doing right now. And like I said, I'm taking the week back. So today is Kuji Chagalia, Self-Determination Day. And um, I know I know some people might be mad about that. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know the Nguz Asawa, but you didn't know the days of the week before they gave it to you. I'm giving you I'm giving you something else. I'm giving you another assignment. Learn your principles. Learn principles that will help you move forward in your life rather than constantly moving backwards. Black folks, we have been moving backwards. We've been hustling backwards. Now we need to start hustling forward. We need to start building towards what we want. We really need to start putting our foot down and doing some nation building. Because like I told y'all before, everybody else is circling their wagons, and you need to circle your wagons too. Right? You need to circle your wagons too. So now, I'm driving on the road, and I'm listening to NPR because y'all know 
it's hard for me to listen to some of the radio stations now, because even though I am a hip hop, some of that shit that they be playing, I, you know, I, you know that they claim is hip hop, I, I just can't get with it. I, that's just me. I, you know, I, I'm old now. I can't do it. I, I, I can't do it. it. It hurts my stomach every time I listen to it. You know, I've been spoiled. I, I grew up. And, and I came into manhood in Columbus, Ohio, and I was blessed to run into groups like Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Those of you that's in Columbus and you know about Spirit, I can't listen to no other hip hop groups after after being exposed to Spirit. You know what I'm saying? People that claim hip hop and listen to Spirit, watch a Spirit show. You go to a Spirit show, you hear MCing. You got a dope DJ. You got um, great natural beats. You got individuals pop locking and breaking. You know what I'm saying? How do I supposed to be listening to some of this people moaning and groaning and, and talking about this is hip hop? You know what I'm saying? And, and climb I me. Mean, come on now. I, I can't, you know, you know, I, I grew up with people like Dame Lee. You know what I'm saying? They could just freestyle off the really, I'm talking about really freestyle. I ain't talking about writing stuff. And to prove that he was freestyling, this is a true story. I walked into a club, me, my brother Allende, and somebody else. We walked into the club. Dame was on the mic freestyling. As we walked through the crowd, Dame freestyled everything we did until we got up to the damn stage. That's a freestyle. Now, this stuff that y'all doing right now, where you pre-write it, put it in your phone, and then be reading the phone, freestyling. Right, that, that, you know what I'm saying? That's that's freeloading. That ain't freestyling, right? Right now, fright freestyle. This one, every every Gucci Chagli, every Ujima, I'm freestyling, right? No script. I go with the news. I go with what's going on right now. So I'm riding in the car listening to NPR, and this comedian who was in Egypt, and he wrote a book. Uh, a fool's guide, I think it's called a fool's guide to a fool's guide, no, a dummy's guide to revolution and how I laugh my way through the Arab Spring. Pretty funny guy. And um, they were talking about why a lot of right wing people, I want y'all to listen to this, why a lot of right wing people don't like Muslims. Right. Shouts out to Kevin Sanchez. Shouts out to my brother Anthony Chapman. Um, shouts out to, um, of course, um, Naichi. Um, shouts out to Real Fake Media. Um, let's see what's going on on YouTube real quick before I finish this little part of my story. Uh, okay, cool. It is what it is. I'm hurt. I'm hurt. But it is what is it? What it is? Good night, my darling. All right. Um, so make sure we still stream. All right, my White man's hot. Cause I, I, you know, I don't loud. I need to turn it down. Just what I'm saying. I don't want to kill those people. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna turn. Off. I don't want to be on a crawl aggressive. Cause I know. Some, I know you. All right. Okay, now let's go. Cause still to the red. Just a little. I'm going ask them. Why you, a lot of right wing people don't like you. He took himself. His ass. Is, it's not that we. Um, is it? It's not that we believe that Muhammad was evil. Hell, it's not even that we, that the Quran is inherently evil. We have problems. Listen, now you go back and you say it just, we had a problem because we're slaves, and slaves are inherently evil. I don't know. Somebody heard me. And I do the show all by myself. I don't hurt. It's not really evil. The whole is really evil. It's not the religion of an evil. That's your holy book. The fact of the is that you are ex slaves. So evil. You mean what? Well, quarters. Not too wide. That I think it was Ishmael that came from. It meant that Ishmael so I think I can hear no there. I mean, that's just the I have to go and I have to do research on, on the base. I ain't not sure that y'all know what's going on. Um, so, all right, uh, man, all right. so let me go on and share, all right, so, I'm about to pop open, last bottle of Ambrosia, I'm gonna pop open, last bottle, for now, oh my god, oh my god, what's up, Jamie, That's I'm popping my bottle of Ambrosia, so y'all can see how lively it is, y'all 
y'all see that? And I know y'all can hear that. I know y'all can hear that, right? Go give me a napkin, baby. And then go to bed because you're supposed to be in bed. That is ambrosia. That's ambrosia. Now, this one is kind of excited to get out. But that's how it goes. All right, now this is a healthy probiotic drink that I produce myself. I'm about to have my next batch ready. Hopefully I can calm it down, but this one been sitting around for a couple of, I mean, maybe about two weeks now. It's ready. I didn't cool it off before I opened it, but yeah, it's ready, y'all. It's ready. Look at that. So when you open it, I always suggest for the initial pop, you should always have you an extra cup so that you don't miss a lot of that health. All right. Man, that's like popping the champagne, fam. So, we're going to sip on some of this ambrosia. Actually, I need to save some of this for the morning toast. So, y'all have to excuse me because I'm going to have to be cheap for a second, right? I'm going to have to be cheap for a second because those on YouTube that be tuning in for that morning toast, I want to make sure we got a little ambrosia left for the morning. But I will be checking the, the batch I got going right now, and it will be ready. For those that don't know about Ambrosia, go to www.giamijourney.com. I'm going to put it down here for you. Oh, giamijourney.com. Look it up. It's real good for you. What's up, bro? Hey, yeah, it's good to see you, too. How you doing, Sister Kelly? Oh yeah, I will. I mean, uh, Jane, we old. I, 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 you know, I, ain't, I don't expect you to be a YouTube. I mean, a, a Facebook or YouTube genius. So now, once again, for those that don't know, what I'm drinking right now is one of the sponsors, and it's that Ambrosia, that Ambrosia, that Ambrosia. Now, what is it? It is what people call kombucha, except that I did my research and I said, damn. My people don't need no more sugar. We need honey. Right? Actually, we don't even need honey. But hey, honey better than the sugar. So I found out that you can make kombucha with green tea and honey. So I went and I did it. I looked at the health benefits of green tea compared to black tea that they use for kombucha. Outclasses it. You know what I'm saying? Helps with possible dementia. Helps with diabetes. You know what I'm saying? Helps you lose weight. Hi, uh, uh. I'm, I'm glad. Thank you for joining joining me, Sister Kelly. All right, it's hell. I mean, it, 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 it's 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 you got to look up green tea, right? So then I add honey. You look at the healing properties of honey. Honey, honey is like peroxide. You put honey on a cut, it starts cleaning out everything. It's antibacterial, it's antimicrobial, it's antiviral. Right? Honey, most of y'all know that when you take honey with a sore throat, it soothes your sore throat. So honey kind of heals you from the inside. Last but not least, I threw in the power of fermentation. What's the power of fermentation? Fermentation, for those who don't know, is basically when. Think about this. Fermentation is what our ancestors like to call, and I y'all know some of y'all will disagree with me, true alchemy. Because with fermentation, you take one thing, you turn it to another. You take a pickle. I mean, you take a cucumber, turn it to a pickle. You take a grape juice and squeeze it, get the juice, and turn that juice into wine. You see what I'm saying? You turn one thing into another. Alchemy. Now, what fermentation does, it releases some nutrients that were not available to your body because the microbes, the bacteria, and the yeast so digest stuff. So it's digested for you. Opens it up, body, so it's able to be able for you to ingest it a lot easier. Make this at home and you can make it too. Not only can you drink stuff from me, but you can learn how to make it yourself. Black folks, we got to start learning things for us. Y'all seen how it spread out. You know what that's called? That's called carbonation. That's what you go and buy Sprite for. That's what you go and buy Coke for. That's what you go and buy all that other stuff for. I'm telling you right now, you can make this in your house. 
If you can't, if you don't want to make it in your house, I can make it for you. Or I can get some of the young people around me or some of the young people around you to make it. It's a business that we all can go into. What's up, Miss Monica? Oh, we got to talk about that date because that date is already took it. So we're going to have to talk about that date. So now I'm going to sip on this and we're going to get into this folk tale. Y'all ready to get in the folk tale? If you ready to get in the folk tale, say yeah. I know I can't hear you. Now, for those that are interested, I'm about to put up the number so that you can join me on the call. Don't be scared. 556-4535. You call in live. You know what I mean? Um, I know some people may call in. Some people may. Uh, uh, I already got some. I got some brewing right now. When you come to Columbus. You're going to get some sips. I'm going to give you a couple of bottles. But then, you know, like I said, you're going to check it out. Check out the help. Before they start drinking this, I want you to check out the health benefits. And also, I want you to know the different flavors that I got. Because it's one flavor that I didn't get to mention on um, the interview with Yurima that I really want to talk about. And it's called and it's called um, the Death Eater. I know that's going to scare some of y'all. The what? The Death Eater. Right, I took two of the most underclassed herbs, two of the ma two major herbs that nobody ever talk about. And I'm gonna tell you why they don't talk about it. Nobody talk about dandelion root. Nobody talks about that burdock root. You know why? Because they can't charge you an arm and leg for it. You get up, go out in your yard, or go out to the nearest root, uh, woods to you. Oh, cool, Jamie. I can't wait to see you. Right? You go to the nearest woods and you get these herbs yourself. That's why everybody ain't talking about them, fam. Listen, look at what burdock root do for you. Look at what dandelion root can do for you. And on top of that, if something go down, as long as you know how these roots live, how they look, you never go hungry because they all edible and a medicine. Oh, Lord have mercy. And I now did myself once again. Hmm. Girl, you ain't going to be in the city on 7th and 8th. I just told you that weekend is taken. I mean, unless y'all going to be somewhere else. You want to change the dates. Somebody already got those dates. Woo! All right. On to the... I, I told y'all that I'm going live from the book. Sister Kelly, excuse the language. But you already know how... You, you, you know your younger brothers. You know how I am. Monica. Monica, you listening? The 7th and the 8th is taken, baby. You got to talk to me, all right? All right, here we go. So, for those that don't know, the format of the show is basically this. I read a folk tale from Aesop Fables. The book that I'm reading right now is Aesop Fables, translated by George Fowler Thompson. Now, I get into the proverb, but I want you to understand. First things first. Okay, all right, all right. First things first, these folk tales aren't for good. I mean, these folk tales were not created for kids, even though we use them for kids, right? These folk tales were developed to teach not just children, but adults as well. So there's wisdom in these stories. Also, understand that Aesop was in a similar situation to you. Read up on Aesop. His history is very similar to you. So a lot of these lessons still apply today. As a matter of fact, I haven't even read the story, and I'm going to be able to connect the story to some foolishness that's going on in the world right now. All right, cool. We'll do that. The lion and bull. A lion greatly desiring to capture a bull and yet afraid to attack him on account of his great size, resorted to a trick to ensure his destruction. He approached the bull and said, I have slain fine sheep, my friend, and if you will come home and partake of him with me, I shall be delighted to have your company. The lion said this in the hope that as the bull was in the act of reclining to eat, he might attack him to advantage. And make him his his um, and make his meal on him. The bull, on approaching the lion's den, saw the hug, the huge spits, 
and giant cauldrons, and no sign whatsoever the sheep. And without saying a word, quietly took his departure. The lion inquired why he went off so abruptly without a word of salutation to his host, who had not given him any cause for offense. I have reasons enough, said the bull. I see no indication whatever of your having slaughtered a sheep, while I do see very plainly every preparation for your dining on a bull. Alright, did y'all get that? Now, this story, I mean, basically what Aesop does, right, to keep himself safe, Aesop used to tell stories and use animals rather than use actual people. Now, I have been in a situation like this before, right, a real life situation like this before, right, where people act like they're your friend and try to lead you somewhere so some harm could be done to you. I have been in business arrangements like this. I have been in real life actual situations where people were trying to hurt me like this. See, we have to understand, man. These folk tales aren't just for kids, man. There's a lesson in here. As a matter of fact, as black people, I will demonstrate and show you how this story applies to us politically and economically. I'm not playing. Those of you that have comments, feel free to hit it. Alright? I'm not joking. These folk tales will change your life once you really start sitting down and start putting some reflection on them, man. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not enough just for us to be reading anymore. It's not enough for us just to be watching TV. We need to sit down and think about it. We need to discuss it. We need to, you know, we, we need to digest the, the mental food a little bit more. Right? You know what I'm saying? Sort of like, you know how when you eat a good meal, you get sleepy? You get the itis? We got to do the same thing with good information. Sometimes we got to sit back and let your belt loose, let your mental belts loose, and just allow your body to digest, allow your mind to digest what's going on. Right? So I'm going to read it one more time, and then we're going to break it down. A lion greatly desiring to capture a bull, and yet afraid to attack him on account of his great size, resorted to a trick to ensure his destruction. Damn, I just seen this last night. He approached the bull and said, I have slain a fine sheep, my friend, and if you will come home and partake with me, I shall be delighted to have your company. The lion said, this in the hope that as the bull was in the act of reclining to eat, he might attack him to advantage and make him his meal. The bull on approaching the lion's den saw the huge spits and giant cauldrons and no sign whatsoever of the sheep. And without saying a word, quietly took his departure. The lion inquired why he went off so abruptly without a word of salutation to his host who had not given him any cause for offense. Listen to that. I have reasons enough, said the bull. I see no indication whatever of you having slaughtered a sheep. While I do see very plainly every preparation for your dining on a bull. Where my thunder at? What is thunder? This one aged. Very mature. Free probiotics. Free probiotics. Let's talk. First of all, who used the male of a warrior. Hope somebody out there that's listening, if anybody know what the major weapon of a warrior is. You turn up here, Right? I know what y'all know. Somebody should hit me up and let me know what is the key weapon of warrior. Somebody out there got it. All right. I'm going to give y'all a second. Somebody got the key weapon of warrior. Come on now. 
Come on now. Come on now. The chief of a the chief weapon boy is his mind. So this bull, this bull, this bull. Uh oh, I messed up. Hold on, I'm clicking buttons, experimenting. Uh oh, messed up on YouTube. Hold on, fam. All right, hopefully I'm back up. Am I back up? All right, boom. All right, I'm back. Right, I'm back up. I don't have my decision. I want by the scene. All right, cool. All right, cool. Check back up. The chief warrior. This is mine. We, brothers and sisters, please teach your children this. We got too many of our young relying. We got too many people relying on weapons, on knives, on, on, on hand grenades. I, I had a man in life who had a hand grenade. It my mind. Well, anyway, they're relying on everything else but their mind. This lion wanted to eat. Y'all hear that? Listen, those of you on Spreak, y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? YouTube, you hear that? I made this at home. Natural process. Teaching me so much about life and about the universe. Just brewing this stuff. Gotta say something for my mortal ancestors. All right. So the major weapon of a warrior is his mind. And this lion decided to use his mind because this bull is too big. And oftentimes when we come up upon opponents that are too big for us, lesson number one, you don't beat an opponent, opponent with your might. You beat him with your mind. You beat him with your mind. Right? We ain't got to. See, because a lot of us want to muscle this whole idea of white inferiority. Y'all want to, y'all say uh, supremacy or whatever. Right in for your right? A lot of y'all want to pass away much stuff down. All we gotta do is use our mind, man. Our ancestors have already laid it out for. Is it? It's, it's about. It's about. Over. It's about. <sighs> They're so arrogant. They are gonna beat themselves. All we gotta do is be wide enough to move out. You know, when that battle comes, all we gotta do is move, right? Move. You use mental jujitsu, right? Already be. You know what I'm saying? It's the thing that holds us hostage. We're caught up in an illusion, right? So the lion wants to take down this bull, but the bull's too big and relies the first weapon of a warrior. The first weapon of the warrior is the mind. So he goes and he invites the bull to his crib, right? The bull not wanting to be rude says, okay, cool. I'm going uh, to come to your crib. I'm going to come over your crib and I'm going to eat. And I want to say this. Yo bulls don't eat meat. Now, there's another lesson for us, right? Stay in your lane. First off, the bull don't eat meat. So why the hell is the bull going to put the lion's in meat? A lot of people are accepted by we don't need the big spot. I was having a lot of people been selling off the because you're somebody that they need to fit in with. So the bull got to say, he's about to act on something that we know bulls don't do. When last time one of y'all go eat meat? So this bull walk away, trying to go eat some bread so I can bring food, so I can bring two things to the community. So the bull goes with it. The bull is because the bull know that the natural is what. Now the bull went wrong to go talk about the shit the lion. The bull don't eat meat. Second bull is natural. Black folks. Family, come on. Gather in. Gather in. Everybody's not being. Everybody is not praying. Everybody is not your friend. You have enemies. Bulls and lions don't get along. I know, I know y'all want to work, but we just get along with everybody. But everybody can get along because if we are alone, we would not make progress. If everything was easy, we would not make progress. There has to be enemies. It's the way of things. The gazelle got the lion. The chicken got the fox. The sheep got the wolves. And black folks, y'all got them too. We got to. And we have to understand this. I know, I know it hurts some of y'all, right? Because you've been taught that you need to love everybody. But love 
does not mean you can't have enemies, fam. Listen to me. Love, you love your enemy? Just because it's your enemy. My grandma told me this a long time ago. She said, I can love you from a distance. If you're going to bring this type of stuff to my house, I can love you from a distance. And we got to learn this. We can love everybody. But we have to make sure that we're clear. Love doesn't mean that I have to hug you every time I see you. Especially when I know you up to no good. Loving you means that I know you. It requires love. So the bottom line that I'm trying to get you to understand from this folktale is that we all have natural enemies and we don't need to be frolicking and playing and trying to be cool with our damn enemies. But we do. Economically, politically, socially, our enemies have been open and been honest and we have done everything to be like, just accept us. No. No. We have to be honest with ourselves and be honest and understand that it's okay. That it's okay that we have enemies. We just don't have to hate them. But when they step out of line, we got to be able to smash their ass. We, I mean, this is the honest to God truth. It happens everywhere. The lion don't hate the damn gazelle. The loves him. Oh, he loves them. He especially loves him when he's chewing on them. Right? The lion loved the bull. And the bull loved the lion. The bull loved the lion so much that he wanted to be like the lion. He wanted to go to the cave. And he thought he was going to be an honored guest in the lion's house. How many times has that happened to us? Now, this has happened to me in the streets. And I see it happening every year, every year and a half with my people. We become cool as hell with the lion and going to the lion's den. We're going to vote. But when we get there, there's no shit. What we see? We see the spicks and everything waiting to cut, but we don't stop. See, this is why I got the bull because to assist. The bull was at least smart enough to look and not just leave. He was smart to look at the situation and be, hey, whoa, hey. the more it looks like that. This motherfucker trying to kill me. You know? You know what I'm saying? What's the place for editor to get his pay? To get him cornered. Especially when you out. Especially when you got him out. You got the strength. I'm talking to Joe. But like that. They want to cross. They want to to make a decision. You got to make a decision. No, nah, we don't have to do nothing. Economically, we the bull marching towards the cave. Not even realizing that we are the meal. I have to send shots out to Yvette Cornell. Yvette, Yvette Cornell said that this country is built on black fair. This means we have marched into the cave with the lion. And the lion feast on us. The lion survives. Failed. Think about it. The predators succeed on the prey's failures. If you don't succeed in our smart, don't succeed in him. Don't succeed in him. The predators, the predator always wins from the peace, failures. I'm saying, y'all, you don't think it's time for us to start? Stop failing? I know I, I'm, I'm the first but for the years of this shit, it's starting to hurt. You understand what I'm saying? All right. So, so the bull looks in the cave. And starts to turn around. And the lion pulls his next car. Let me hold on. Cause I want y'all, because they do this to us politically as well. Look, listen. The bull on approaching the lion's den are the huge spits and giant cauldron. And no sign will ever. And without saying a word, quietly took departure. Now listen, the lion. And cried him so abruptly, without a word of salutation to his host, who had not given him any cause for offense. That's that. That's that Jedi mind trick. This lion got every 
ill tip for this bull. But he plays it all the way out. Why are you leaving? Man, I swear this happened to me. I swear to God this happened. My stomach was like, dude, leave. 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 And I pushed it right up to the edge. I was about to go into the cauldron, y'all. And I left. But we as a people, we, we get the feeling, but we still go in. We still, we still, we still hoping for the best. The fact of the matter is, if we don't take something, we don't go for our wash hands. They'll take your plate. They'll take food on your plate. And they'll take you as food. If you allow it. If the bull would have went in the cave, it would have been his fault because he noticed everything that was in there. He saw the spit. He saw the culture. He switched. But you know you do? Look at me. As a people, they're going to be like, oh, it ain't for me. Oh, he's, oh, he's not that kind of, he's that evil. He is my friend. He loves me. He wouldn't do this. No, 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 no. Not some more the lion. No, 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 no. All the way up to the booth. We get all the way up to the booth. We put in. You know what I'm saying? All they have been leading us to the cave. They've been leading us to the cave. Come on, man. Matter of fact, don't bother y'all. I'm saying not being proper for you. Um, and that's like our spirit. It's your boat. So I ain't get all the way to you. Hey, fellas, now. And if you don't care about it, I care for you. Because y'all been eating up, baby. Bother you. Eating the vibe of baby. Tell the brother. Let's just go high. Just high bars. To build a beautiful concrete building. Under into the cave. <laughs> and they feast. Yeah, let's go look at some of the new. <laughs> the caves. They feasted on babies. The man flips them. Which, 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 which happens. It, 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 he spins them. He, he flips it. Yo, partner. Where you going without, you know, you ain't going, you ain't got you ain't no hug. You just going to get a lead. It's like that now. It's that now. Y'all know, yeah, you play, right? I'm going to make sure, I got to make sure that my kids get the story. I got to make sure that my kids get this story. Because this is so. This one is the hustle. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I have walked this way. seen this story over again with us. I'm saying, black folks, we can see the spit. We can see the call. When are you going to be man and woman enough to around? When woman enough to just say, that's enough? We're not doing this. We're not doing this. When are you going to be a bull just like that? Up? You notice that the man didn't, the bull, didn't try to jump the bull? He was trying to get him confined spot so that he could take life, so that he could be a ditch, so that he could wait for his moment of attack. That's so he could win straight up. I seen this. Anthony Nesbitt told me to watch a, a documentary called uh, "Unforgivable" about Jack Johnson. I mentioned this on my show this morning, and that this strategy right here. Is strategy that they use against our man, Jack Johnson. They couldn't beat him in the ring. <laughs> they couldn't nobody the ring. And I want y'all to understand that. Because right? I'm, I'm just going to the story a little bit. It was amazing to me. The fervor that they felt about maintaining their supremacy in the ring. They, for the great white baby, when they couldn't find nobody to beat this dude. And when they, they couldn't get him in the ring. I want you to listen to this question here. A lion, a lion greatly desired to capture a bull, and yet afraid to attack him on account of his great size, resorted to a trick and his structure. That's exactly what man. That's exactly what they're doing to us over and over and over again, man. We're not sharing this with our boys. We're not sharing this. I'm sorry, I'm talking about these stories. These people are basically tricking us. This is why you make boys are for keeping commitment bugs, but this is why. Do wisdom and walk when you're 
fucking skin. I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, this really bothered me. It bothered me because I'm seeing what I see. I mean, we just want to belong. We just want to accept it. We'll do it in nature. Okay, I'll do it. Going to K. Don't do it. You can see us. Don't, don't go out. You can see K. We can see that the even though we see that the cold is waiting for and, and it me to see us walking blindly. Walking on. Man, like I said, man, wrong with having enemies. It's not this at all. It's not. Wolves don't. All wolves don't get on this. The wolves happen when the pecks run across each other to fight. It's okay, me. You ain't got to hate your enemy. You ain't got to break your commandments or nothing like that. You supposed to. You can love your enemy, but you have to identify your enemy. You have to identify your enemy. Love means that you know. Loving means that you know somebody. You, you, it doesn't mean that you have to get along. We ain't got to know some of these folks, some of these white folks here. We ain't got to get along with everybody. We don't got to fit into every situation. I ain't got to get along on Facebook. Give it. You understand what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's like some, we just travel. The boy ain't meat. He going some line. The boy know that, the, that he is praying to the lion. Going right into the knee. We're falling for the same trick over and over and over again. And I have to sit up there and watch that. And like I said, man, I'll get up sitting there up here thinking about caves was marching into into the prison, marching our kids into the system. Without I mean, without monitoring what they're giving our kids. What they doing? Don't you know the education? I mean, I really think about this. Laws are designed. To secure the future of those that make the laws. And so is the education. If you didn't make the laws. If you don't have any real access to making the law. Then you're just 19. So that means that further laws come to education. Right? Because they took it first education. First it was education. Then they put it up under the umbrella of the laws and stuff. Once they got it up under the laws, it became a tool of the laws. And the laws are designed to secure the future of the people who made the laws. And last I checked, black folks could possibly be change the law. But the major of this country was never designed for your benefit, never designed for your welfare, never designed for your health, and never designed for your protection. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong. That happens all the time. Matter of fact, I thrive on it. That's how I learn. That's how I grow. All right, fam, I'm out. Kept it down to an hour. Yee! All right, this is Brother Hotel. Once again, reminding you all down listening to Giami Radio. I am your host, Brother Hot Tim, and you are now listening to the show called Folk Tale for Grown Folks. Where we strive to blow up your old paradigms. Good night, family. <laughs>